There was a time when it wasn't the case, but nowadays most industry insiders agree. Electric cars and electric car technology currently present the best way for the automotive industry to move away from internal combustion engines and towards a future with zero or lower tailpipe emissions. Even if you ignore the emissions side of the argument, electric drivetrains make it easier for automakers to implement all of the other things they want to do, like advanced safety and autonomous vehicle features. The move to electric, for the most part, does appear to be a done deal. Despite this, however, there are some key issues that the automotive world, and more widely us, as those who might be interested in making the switch from petrol to electric, need to address in order for the switch to be smooth and sustainable. And while there are some companies out there that are addressing these issues, most aren't. They're issues which are also often cited by critics of plug-in vehicles as the reason that said vehicles aren't all that in a bag of falafel, and they are kind of issues that could impact or already are impacting the future of plug-in cars. They're also the issues that we as plug-in car users should be willing to address in order to change them from problems or sore points to solutions that help show these vehicles are better, cleaner and more sustainable than some would have you believe. So today I figured we'd address the top five things that we're not keen on talking about when it comes to electric cars, why they need to be addressed in order for plug-in cars to continue to gain acceptance, and why plug-in fans and advocates need to have honest discussions about how these things can be improved in the future, rather than sweep them under the metaphorical carpet. This one might seem like an obvious one, but it bears reiterating. While many people will be able to charge their cars at home overnight and won't need to charge their vehicles during an average day, range anxiety of earlier plug-in models could soon be replaced by charger anxiety. The fear that when you arrive at a charging station, it will either be broken or already be in use, making you late. Because charging your electric car does take longer, we need to see a massive increase in public rapid charging stations along major routes that grow directly proportionally to the number of plug-in cars on the road. Right now, we're not seeing that. And even Tesla, yes, Tesla, is finding it needs more charging stations than perhaps we may have first thought. Yes, we have enough charging in many areas for everyday use, but when it comes to holidays and rush periods, well, we need to plan for peak demand not off-peak demand, which is what we had been doing. One solution, get more established businesses like superstores and rest facilities to offer rapid charging to complement existing services. Chances are they'll be able to make charging far more affordable than a standalone network because it will just be one part of their business. Automakers willing to join force and make a Tesla-style network wouldn't be a bad idea either. In most parts of the world, owning an electric car charged from the electricity grid is cleaner than driving an internal combustion engine vehicle, even if some of that electricity comes from fossil fueled power sources. But in order for us to continue improving global emissions, we need to start investing in more clean energy around the world. The cleaner the generation, the cleaner the EV charging from that generated power becomes. Renewable electricity is becoming cheaper and cheaper, and so there's really very little excuse not to switch to a renewable supplier if there's one available to you, or perhaps even generate it at home if you can. If more plug-in cars came with deals to help people do just that, I think we'd be in a far better place, and if more people were generating power at home, it would improve grid stability too. And let's not forget efficiency. That also plays a part. Batteries are often used by critics of electric cars as the reason that they feel plug-in cars are bad for the environment. There was a recent report that came out stating electric cars create a lot more emissions during their production than internal combustion engine cars, primarily because of battery packs. Just as energy generation choices can help clean up the emissions of a plug-in car during its life, smart choices during production can help reduce production emissions. Some automakers are already using renewable energy in their vehicle and battery pack production processes, and we should support those who do with our custom and ask questions of those who don't. Ask them when they're going to switch. Others are working hard to ensure end-of-life programs exist to reuse electric car battery packs after they're removed from a car. These can help further offset any emissions from the pack's initial creation, extending the battery pack's usefulness a few decades or more. Finally, in the battery topic, we need to support companies like Tesla and BMW, 
there are others too, who are clamping down on the sources for the raw materials they rely on to produce electric car battery packs. From the very start of the mining process until the finished battery pack, it's our job as consumers to support and encourage companies that offer ethical sourcing, free from child labour, as well as lower emissions and responsible a mining process as possible. Price is a sticky problem. We're not addressing it yet, although electric car prices are falling, but we need to. Right now, we're not at an economy of scale point where automakers are able to just produce mass market cars that are affordable for everyone. Sure, if you take the average price paid for a new car in some countries, it does fall within the sticker range for many new electric cars. But to truly democratise ownership of plug-in vehicles, we need to work together to encourage automakers to make more affordable models. Some of that will come with economies of scale, but automakers also need to start working to begin their own battery production facilities because the ongoing battery shortage, which is getting worse, not better, is going to be exacerbated by car companies not building their own in-house battery facilities and instead relying on third-party suppliers. Those third-party suppliers who put up prices and restrict supply, as we've seen LG Chem do recently with Hyundai and other automakers. Again, it's another thing Tesla did right. Building its own in-house battery production means it can focus on other elements of electric vehicle production, like making more vehicles and reducing overall prices. But where Tesla and other automakers haven't done things right yet is the old price versus range problem. We need more affordable, shorter range models with really good rapid charging as standard in order to give buyers more choice in the market. And that means we need to start talking about the issues of price. The final thing I think we need to start talking about as fans and owners of plug-in cars is longevity of plug-in cars moving forwards. Some companies, Nissan for example, do offer battery replacements for cars, but the cost is so prohibitively expensive and you can't upgrade capacity in Nissan's case that the car becomes a throwaway vehicle. And in order for plug-in vehicles to become truly sustainable, we need to ensure that each new plug-in car can continue to drive around, at least theoretically, for 10 or 20 years after it rolls off the production line. BMW does offer battery pack upgrades and that's the way we should be going. Solution? Ask automakers to start working together on homogenizing battery pack connectors and designs, maybe even work on a modular design or license their designs to third-party production facilities who can then provide aftermarket pattern packs for those who want them. Automakers? Well, they will unfortunately keep trying to sell you a new car because that's how they make money. But if we have an open and honest and frank discussion about aftermarket batteries and vehicle longevity, Remember, motors go on for years and years, and technically a plug-in vehicle that's 10 years old will be in a far better overall condition than an internal combustion engine model. We can start this process. If we just shrug and keep throwing cars away after 10 years, and this is an industry-wide problem, not just electric vehicles, then we can help dramatically reduce the carbon footprint of our transportation. So there you have it. Five sticking points, or maybe sore points, I guess, that electric car fans, electric automakers, and the wider world needs to be able to talk like grown-ups about if we want electric vehicles to be the predominant choice for personal transport in the future. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And what other topics do we need to openly and honestly discuss? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. That's it. Don't forget to give us your thumbs up or your thumbs down. Leave a comment. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. As always, thanks to our Patreon supporters, without which we'd never be able to make all of this content. You can join them yourself at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.